Hey everybody, it is March the 1st. We're super excited. We've made it through the winter successfully, although we still have a, at least a month of winter. March March can be everything from what we're having now, which is really spring-like, um, to, you know, you could get a, a big blizzard. So we're not counting our chickens before they hatch, but uh, we do have that feeling of spring. I don't know if you get that. Um, being away for seven years, always chasing summer, I, I kind of missed out on that where you've gone through a very cold or, you know, kind of harsh winter and then you get your first warm days of spring and the feeling is unbelievable and that's what we've had today. You get that little bit of spring fever, you want to go outside and do all kinds of chores and so on. Um, but you can see the icicles are dripping and melting and uh, it just, I don't know, it's, a, it's zero degrees, so 32, which in some... In the beginning of the winter, that's considered cold, but at the end of the winter, it's uh, it's just warm and balmy. So anyway, we've got that spring feeling ahead of us. It is now March, um, so we're doing a bit of housekeeping here uh, on the outside. We are down to our last propane. In November, before ice up, we got eight 100 pounders, and we have this full one and an eighth of that one. So we, we calculated pretty good. Um, we're... In the very coldest part of the winter, we now know that we used two a month. So November, December, January, February, we used just about eight, just under two a month. Uh, this time of year, we'll probably use one a month, and in the summer, we use one for the whole summer. So um, I think today we're going to bring back a couple of empties and bring uh, some full ones back, and that should do us right until, until the fall time. So that's good. Um, with hardwood, we've got one, two about five cords left or maybe even six so we put down 12 for the winter and now we're into march so we may use one cord in march so that's not bad five five and a half cords or four and a half cords left for next year uh, i think we calculated pretty good on the uh, hardwood this morning being march 1st we got up uh, we had let the fire go out overnight because it wasn't that cold but to get the fire started, we used our very last piece of kindling. So we underestimated slightly on the kindling, but not too bad. It got us through the hardest part of the winter. So today, or this week, Dan's going to chop up some more uh, pine wood and make some more kindling to get us through March and April. Uh, we're going to have a bit more propane. So in terms of supplies, we're in really good shape. Um, yeah, so we're going to get busy doing that. Carol and Caroline are heading out tomorrow morning early and driving eight hours from here so they're gonna have some uh, dinners and some fun times together for the next couple of days and a big wedding on the weekend and then they'll be back early next week so it's gonna be uh, three lonely bachelors up here doing the work and having a lot of fun and Lando four right four bachelors Carol and Caroline head across the lake and make their way to Ottawa to celebrate the wedding of Caroline's cousin and childhood friend Rosalind decent amount of softwood left, some pine and hemlock and stuff, which we just need to split. We split them down small here with the bigger axes and then we can take them either inside or in another room and use smaller hatches to get to even smaller sizes for starting fires in the morning. This stuff will get blazing really quick when it's small and get hot, get a good bed of coals within a couple of minutes compared to hardwood which will take a good hour to get to coals. So. When it's early morning and the fire's died out, there's nothing better than having a good pile of this stuff to get going.
from the uh, pile Peter split, splitting it with the hatchet now into even smaller pieces like this. And uh, we don't need too much of this, just a small pile that will help us get the fire started because it's always easier to start with the smallest wood possible and then kind of work your way up to bigger logs and that will give you better coals leading to a longer lasting fire. these smaller pieces of wood and kindling like this we have a bucket we set it in right next to our fire inside the cabin that way it's always dry and always stays warm and ready to light a not another fire with it because even if some of the loggers uh, the larger logs that are outside get damp or cold it doesn't really matter because if the the wood you're lighting the fire with is dry enough and gets to a hot enough temperature, it'll burn almost anything. So get this pile inside to dry off. Alright, we have three full tanks here, um, with it being spring coming on, I mean it's not quite there yet. We'll probably use one for the rest of March, and then probably three months on this one, and three months on this one, so we use a lot less propane in the, in the spring and summer, that's for sure. Yeah, the main thing that runs on propane in the summer is the fridge freezer inside. And then, of course, we have propane stove and oven. So, um, our long term goals are to get away from even needing propane. But right now, the propane heaters are a lifesaver in the winter. Um, we're, we're thinking of going towards a wood burning stove that also can be used as an oven and a cooktop. The only challenge obviously is going to be in the summer because it's going to be blazing hot already in the cabin and then you know if you're cooking over fire it's going to be that much hotter so we're not sure what to do about that we are hoping to eventually get a 
fridge and freezer that is more 12 volt, something that would run off of the battery system or 24 volt. Um, they make some really efficient ones now. We bought that one about five years ago and since then we've got the, the 12 volt freezer which is in our, our new shop there and it's incredibly, incredibly efficient. So they make some great stuff now. If you're, if you're building an off-grid cabin, take a look at the, what they offer you know, for solar powered fridges and freezers. It's incredible. So anyway, bit by bit, we're learning uh, more and more about off-grid living. And so now we're good for uh, this. What we're gonna do now is make a fire outside and cook up a pulled pork without the help of Carol or Caroline because they're gone at a wedding. I think we'll be all right, guys. I mean, we're we're not as good cooks as them, but when it comes to meat, we can uh, usually get by. Come on, Lando. Come here. Come here, buddy. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Here. Oh, you got my hand, buddy. Woohoo! You got my finger with that. Next time you jump, try not to get my finger. Yeah. Wait. No, no, here, this one, this one, this one, this one. Wow! Got my finger both times. Good boy, Lando. Won't drop his toy. Alright, we got the pork shoulder on there. Um, right now the fire, of course, just got going, so it's got a lot of direct flames, but very soon it'll burn down. We got soft wood underneath, some hardwood on top. That'll burn down to a nice bed of coals. And we'll just let that cook. It's gonna have to sit there for a couple of hours, depending on the temperature, but we'll keep an eye on it. Our goal is to get that to a tenderness where it just breaks apart so in the meantime we're just enjoying a beautiful day the temperatures were really cold last night down to minus 20 but they've already shot up so we're above zero and down to sweater weather and we can smell spring in the air and the birds are singing and it's just a beautiful day we're hoping to go out uh, shortly with the snowmobiles and just kind of show you around the, this lake and we'll try to get up to some other lakes with that have no cabins on them and just show you a bit more of the lake than we've shown before and some of the surrounding area and uh, for us it's just uh, important to enjoy winter before it's gone in a couple of weeks it's gonna be a whole different story so it's been an amazing winter and uh, even though we can't wait for spring we just love spring 
we're holding on to the snow while it's here. It's the most enjoyable time of the year, I think. So this trail we're on now is kind of fun. It goes through the bush here, um, takes us from some really low spots. That typically in the summer you can't really access because they're too shallow for a boat and they're kind of a swamp area. Really great for seeing wildlife, but um, in the winter you can just cross everything. So going from the swamp area, then up here onto the rocks, and then it'll come down the other side onto a lake and it's just a, a lake with no cabins on it, just a wild lake, and sometimes we go fishing up there in the summer. But uh, yeah, the, the, as you can see, the terrain is very varied around here, and the trees as well. When, in this area, we've got a lot of big, huge pine trees, big white pines, which is the tree of Ontario, actually. And uh, down in the lowlands, we just came through uh, Poplar Grove, and then there's sections that are uh, maple forest. So a lot of fun, but let's, uh, let's keep exploring. Uh, we just stopped here by a babbling creek that comes out of the forest and uh, I've come by here a few times and, and this hasn't frozen all year. It's been running running water all winter and comes a section out into the lake here and you can also see some kind of, it might be those little otters uh, that we've seen in the summer, but something's been running around on the ice here by the water and on the other side of the lake as well. I was thinking it could be beavers but normally they stick they create a like a mud slide or a snow slide with these guys just been pitter pattering around so we're gonna go get a closer look at the footprints
One of the, for me anyway, one of the funnest things about doing a, a nature ride like this is getting off the machines and turning them off and just breathing in the fresh air in the forest and listening to the sounds of nature and just kind of exploring on foot what we have around here. And right here, <clears throat> we noticed that pretty much all the trees species of the mixed boreal forest that we're in are here. Um, farther north, if we go northern Ontario, you get into the the Tyaga Forest, the largest biomass in the world. Um, and when we went up to Pickle Lake, for instance, we were in amongst the Tyaga Forest. But here it's a mixed boreal. So uh, right beside me, this is a big white pine. Absolutely stunning, beautiful tree. Um, behind me, right here, is a red pine. That's native to this area as well. Right beside it is a gnarly old maple. And you can see he's growing on an angle to find some sunlight there. And he's kind of found a spot for himself to uh, flourish in the sunlight. And just behind the maple is, uh, and here's a little baby one, but the, the um, hemlock grow in the forest here. And then uh, you keep moving over here and then you're, you've got a, a cedar tree. And that one, they like to wet, have their feet wet. And so it's right beside the creek there. So. Um, we have spruce and some other species of trees, but all, almost everything you, that you're going to find here is just within uh, 10 feet of where I'm standing. So it's just a spectacular area. Like I said earlier, we saw all the footprints of these little otters that uh, are known to be in the lakes here. And uh, then we've got much larger wildlife. They're very shy up here, but there's bear, which would be hibernating still this time of year, but be coming out pretty soon. Uh, we have mighty moose, massive moose, which are beautiful. And uh, and then there's deer, white-tailed deer, smaller animals like fox and bobcats, and even lynx are known to roam the area. There's mink and otter and pine marten, and just uh, a lot of beautiful wildlife here. There's a lot of bird species here. Uh, we've had an owl hanging around the house. There's birds of prey, bald eagles that uh, nest on the lake and then there's, uh, there's grouse, and then all the small rabbits and squirrels that feed the, the, the uh, birds of prey. So it's just a, an incredible ecosystem and we're happy to be a part of it here and be able to come out and enjoy it. And we're excited that we could take you with us and show you a little bit around the lake. Old pal. Let's go check our uh, porch over. What do you got? You got a stick? There you are. Beautiful fire. Wow, that looks good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that looks soft, tender, and delicious. It's been simmering the whole time we're, we were gone on our trip and it's far enough that it didn't burn and it's close enough that it stayed nice and hot so I think we got ourselves a meal. Now we have to decide what to do with it. It's probably for three of us, two or three meals, but maybe we'll make some uh, pulled pork tacos or something tonight and uh, decide what to do with the rest of tomorrow.
All right, that pork shoulder turned into an amazing pulled pork. It smells so good, and it was just so tender it fell apart. Um, we're going to make a couple of different meals out of this. Probably uh, pulled pork tacos to start, and then we'll get creative after that. But, uh, yeah, uh, the, the aromas are incredible. I seasoned it with a couple of uh, Carol's favorite seasonings. A kind of a red colored seasoning on the outside and a pitch black one on the inside that we sometimes use on steaks but the the mix of the two just smell amazing so time to eat